Okay, everybody, I'll just get started in just one sec here. I'm just getting things set up. Okay, I think we're recording and I think we're good. All right, hey everybody, I'm Heather and I'm um, here today to talk about um, lead generation ideas with squeeze and landing pages. And I was talking to a few different clients uh, last week that just didn't really understand the difference between a squeeze and a landing page and also wasn't sure when to use a squeeze or a landing page. So I thought I would go through kind of the differences, um, kind of when to use each one, what you can do with them. We can make a few. If anybody has any questions, um, just throw them in the chat and I will try and um, keep an eye on that as well. Um, okay, so here we go. This uh, squeezes and landing pages. I'm going to click over to my next slide. So um, both of these are, you know, lead generation tools, you know, to get people to sign up for something. Um, and then when, once they do make that sign up happen, you know, they go right into your KB Core um, CRM. And so kind of what's the difference, right? The difference is, is that um, a landing page, and I'm going to give you an example of a landing page right here. It's going to ask you to sign up for something before you see the goods. So you can't really see what you're getting. It just kind of describes what you're getting. And you would sign up here and get whatever it is that um, is being advertised. Whereas a squeeze page is going to show you the goods before you... Um, ask for sign up, but you will for sign up once they click on pretty much anything, if that's the way you set your squeeze page up. So I'm, you know, here's all my, um, some new construction homes and I want to look at them. Oh, this looks really cool. And then it's going to say, oh, sorry, you need to sign up. So that's kind of the difference between the squeeze and the landing page. So this would be the squeeze. Um, this would be the landing page, if that makes sense. And again, if anybody has any questions while I'm going on, just kind of put them in the chat for me and I'll check on it. Okay, so where was I with my thing? All right, so basically people are like, well, when should I use one and when should I use the other? And I always find when you're doing lead generation, if you can give them a little taste of what they're gonna get, it's going to convert better. So that's why I generally will say, use a squeeze page if you're offering a list of homes or even a single property information because they can kind of see it, but they can't quite get to it. And it, it makes the um, impetus to sign up bigger because they, they've kind of got this little taste and they want all the rest of the details. But if you're going to get ask them to sign up for something, um, to receive something back like a relocation guide or a buyer's guide or something like that, um, that the better way to do that, obviously you can't do that in a squeeze page, then I would use a landing page if I was doing something of that nature. Um, so I thought we'd go over how we make each one of them and then we can start up, we can kind of start a conversation about some of the ideas of, of how you can use them and where you can put them. So we're gonna go back over here to, let's see, you go into your KV core and you go to your marketing. No, sorry, you go to your lead engine, my bad. Um, these are where you're going to build your squeeze and your landing pages. So I thought I would start with the squeeze page because I think it's the easier one. Um, you're gonna, right here is build and right here is history. So you're gonna make sure you're on build. You're gonna make sure you're, choose the website that works for you. So if you're on a team or if you have multiple sites, um, you definitely want to make sure you're on the correct one. And so then from here, you're going to decide if it's a multi-property or a um, single property. If you have sold data, some people do and some people don't, depending on your MLS, you can do a sold list um, or something like that. So if you say, hey, I wanna make a list of all of the, um, you say, I want, you're in Los Angeles, and 
you want to make a list of all of the single family homes um, that are, you know, I don't feel like, I don't wanna give people anything under 500,000, let's say. Um, and your option is, I want all the homes that have a pool. And so <clears throat> your offer could be, here's all of the homes in Los Angeles with pools, um, you want to peruse that list. And so when you think about um, offering things that differentiate you from like, you know, Zillow or Trulia or Realtor.com, it's making a curated list for them that is something that people want. So I want to look at only homes with pools, or I want to look at only one story homes because I'm downsizing, or I want to look at um, only new construction. And so, um, you know, you're going to put your options in that you want. And then when you make your um, page configuration, this is kind of what helps you when they come in to your uh, CRM. And so your source would be whatever it is or wherever you're putting this at. So let's say you're going to put this um, on a Facebook post of all the homes with pools. So the source could be Facebook post. And then the hashtag could be... Los Angeles and cool homes so that when um, the lead comes in and they sign up, you'll definitely see that they want to look in Los Angeles and they want cool homes. And then the Facebook cover photo, this is only if you're going to post it to social media. If you're posting it anywhere else, it doesn't really matter. But if you're posting it to social media, um, it will pull a picture from that list for you as like a thumbnail when you're posting. And you can choose any of these things and it kind of depends on your MLS rules. So you could be listings from search results, which might not be a listing that your brokerage owns. And so sometimes that's allowed and sometimes that's not. Um, it could be um, listings from your own agency, but it might not match the search results. So you kind of want to decide um, what you want. The other thing you can do to keep yourself really, really confined is you could use a photo from a specific listing. Like if it's yours, you can choose that listing. Um, like let's say you're, you have a home with a pool for sale, you might want to use your own listing because you want to advertise that along with the whole list. So you can you know, do whatever you want there. And then from here, you're going to say, how many can they look at? before I make them sign up. And so in this particular instance, I made them do it right away. So as soon as they clicked on any one, they have to sign up. Some people say, oh, you could do two, um, let them look at one and maybe they wanna look at another. Um, I kind of feel like no, the first one is, is a good way to go. You can do two if you're just like, oh, I just don't wanna do that. I want to give them one. Okay, um, I think you'll get more signups this way, but you can do it that way too. Um, I don't know. I've never really used these, but I have used never. I use never if I am um, sending this to somebody that's already in my database because I already have their sign up information. So if I'm putting this in um, a newsletter that I'm sending out to my database or, I, or a mass text or a mass email or something, I'm not going to make them sign up because they've already signed up. So there's, there's no point in that. So that's when I would use the never option. And then I would just generate the link. This gives you two links here. And uh, this is kind of the short link, which I would put in if you were texting it to somebody or something like that. I would use this link if you were putting it on social media. In fact, any social media, they don't like the masked links. They um, Facebook really likes it to see what you're actually doing um, so you don't get flagged. So I would definitely always use the direct link if you're putting it on social media. But if you need it something short for like a text, you can use that there. And then you're gonna generate the link. Oh wait, sorry, we are generating link. So we're here. So this link, you copy it. You can put it in a new tab. And again, there's your, um, there's your squeeze page. And I always check it, make sure that the criteria you put in actually returns something because if you got real specific and then there just isn't anything that matches it, then you're kind of sending them an empty link. So you always want to do that. Uh, okay. So let's go back to where was I here? And then you say, well, how do I manage this? 
Well, if you go to history, you can see all of the, I made this twice, <laughs> this is in here twice, but you can see all of the squeeze pages that you've made. I highly recommend always doing a hashtag on yours, even if you don't um, really need a hashtag for some reason, because it really helps you remember what's what you made here. Because it's, it's multi-property, it's in Los Angeles, but there's no way to tell that it's pool homes unless you put that in your hashtag. So once you've made it, you can always come back here and grab the link again, or you can view it, you know, and see what it looks like. That's the other way to do it instead of opening a new tab um, and seeing what it looks like. So that's how you make a squeeze. Does anybody have any questions on that? Let me know. And then we'll go over to landing pages. This guy's a little different, right? So um, this is if you're trying to get them to sign up for something. Oh, is there a way to make that same squeeze into an alert once they sign in? Yes. So if you go to your marketing, and you go to search alerts, then you can create an alert here. So you can say, should come up, I just made it though. Um, I think that's what it was though. Um, make sure it matches what you want. And then, then you can say anybody that comes in with a hashtag Los Angeles pool, they're going to get a, um, an alert for Los Angeles. And you can say, you know, and you can set it up to whatever it was before. So I think it was single family homes. It would be nice if it was automatic. Sure, I guess that's true. It would be nice if it was automatic. <laughs> um, it's not um, because basically the problem is, is you might not want, the, people don't always want to have that set up um, for something either. So I don't, I think we kind of make it. And also I, I have seen people do things where the list is different than what the alert they want to send them to. Like the list has like kind of everything, but then the alert is like maybe a narrower um, price range or something like the, the squeeze is a little more encompassing because they want more people to sign up, but then what they're going to send them back is a little more curated. So yeah, I mean, there's kind of different reasons why we don't do that automatically and I can definitely suggest it to people, but yeah, we don't have an automatic, an automatic thing, but this will make the automation happen. Um, and again, you could put all this stuff in there and, um, and add the alert so that anyone that, that signs up with that hashtag will then get um, that alert. I'll go back to the landing, no, the landing page. And so this is if you're, let's say you have a um, buyer's guide that you want to send. So let's say fall buyer's guide here, um, you know, get, get buyer's guide. Promise I can spell. I just can't type. I can spell, but I can't type. Uh, okay, and so from here, you can change out. Can we post a squeeze page of listings on social media? But if we post a specific product from the listing broker, yes and yes. If you post a squeeze page of listings on social media, um, you don't need any permissions to do that. However, the picture that I talked about before, choosing that picture, you might want to stay compliant there. But if you're going to post um, something else to social media, just one property, then it, it kind of depends on your area. But for the most part is what I've seen is, yes, you do need to get permission from um, the listing broker to be able to post that or they kind of can report you and get mad. I know different MLSs have different rules, so it might differ in your area, but that's generally how that works. Uh, okay, <clears throat> back to our 
buyer's guide. So you can, you know, you obviously want to put in here and you things that would make them want to get it. So um, whatever is in the, the buyer's guide, you know, um, strategies to win the offer. Um, I'll just do oopsies. How to find the best neighborhood. And you can double click on these guys and they'll go away. So um, if you just want to have two or three or whatever. Say so you do a landing page, squeeze page, or even a property boost, and the trigger is something out of the ordinary. Is it possible to make a short campaign that covers whatever the trigger was and then sign a second campaign that might be about Albury? The second campaign signed automatically with them. The first campaign. Okay. Kind of in yes, and I will get to that question as soon as I'm done doing this guy. Um, all right, so then you would you can change this out to, you know, beat the competition and um, see the overview or whatever it is. Uh, okay, so then. These guys up here are going to tell you what you're going to be doing. So in the lead generation, um, this would be lead generation. If for video view, um, this is if you want them to watch a video. Um, this is you can put a video in with, and so there'd be a video here and ask for their sign up. And you need a your uh, YouTube URL for that. Content hijack, I don't really ever do, but it's just basically if you just want to send them totally somewhere else. It's kind of a bait and switchy thing. Um, this is if you want to get their phone number only for a text lead. This is if you only want to get their address. And this is if you want them to start a Facebook chat with you. So again, hashtag same thing. Um, this one could be buyer's guide. And the submit button would be whatever you want this to say. So. Download the guide now. And then the URL after login, if you're giving them a guide or giving them something that they need to download, the best thing to do is to get a downloadable PDF link or a Google uh, link to put there. And then you can, um, you know, they can go there and they can just download it from there. Those are the two, two good ways to do a download. Um, and then you would save it. When you get to the background, can you show us how to add custom? When I asked for URL, can you clarify what is needed? I tried a static website and it didn't seem to work for me. What do you do? Yeah, if you erase the middle one by accident, you have to start over. <laughs> um, they are, you can't put it back, um, which is what I did. I did um, accidentally erase it by accident. And we just revamped all of our squeeze page stuff along with like being able to see the history and going back and changing it. And now they're working right now on um, making this more editable and where you can go save it, but it's not quite ready yet. So no, you can't. Um, I'm still kind of confused about the landing and squeeze pages. Are these just used for posting on other sites or what? We will get to where to put them and why um, a little later on in the, do you have a specific buyer's guide? We don't have a specific buyer's guide, but like if you subscribe to um, like Keeping Current Matters has one, your broker might give you one. Um, you can make your own in like Canva. They have a ton of them. Uh, those kinds of things are good ways to get buyer's guides. Okay, so back to the background. So if you want to change the background image, you can change it to, and you know, we have different stuff here that you wanna do, but if you want to do your own image, um, the way I do it is I do it on Imgur. And then I 
Well, I know I'm already registered, but I'll just register again. It's been a while since I did it. It's free though, they, they want you to register, but. Well, that's because I probably am already a two. Okay, so if you can add, you can add an image and it will give you an image URL. So here's an image. Just got to load up. Just taking a minute to upload. When it uploads, then you can get a, an image URL for your background. The other way to do it is, this is a little, uh, a little tricky, but if you go to um, make a blog post, and you put your image in there. This is actually maybe the easier way, but um, and then you go to the source code. Right there is your image URL. And then I just wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't save that. So if I went to some background. It'll put it back there. That might be the easier way to do, it, or you can do it through Imgur, which is still uploading. So, but if you can't use Imgur, you can upload it and it will give you a link if you sign up with them. Um, but also you can do it right here. Uh, sometimes if you do it off another website, it doesn't work because the website it's like layered in where it's not supposed to be. So I wouldn't pull it off that. I would always make your own link. Um, when you're doing it. Let's see. The landing pages right now cannot be re-edited after they build. So that's very important. Um, but they will be eventually. We're working on it. Um, so you just cancel out of here, cancel out of here. Yeah, I'm done. Um, then you have that landing page there. And then the URL after login, again, if you went to your um, Google Docs. Do I have anything in my slides? I guess I should have done this before. Um, yeah, so if people want it, let's say I wanted to send them, you know, one of these newsletters or send them the something, I would just say, hey, open it up. This is one I did. This is not just another one we did with the team tactics, but you would say get link. Um, you want to be uh, anyone with the link. You don't want to make it restricted or else they won't be able to do it and copy the link. And you could use that link and put it right in here so that then when they, um, after they say get the download the guide, they'll be popped into their Google Slides and they can get it. And then you're just going to hit save and it's going to say to you, a warning, you will not be able to edit this page or do anything. Um, so what I'm doing, like I said, it's coming that you're going to be able to, to go back to these. But you, when you get this, what I do right now is I just have like a Google Doc or a Word Doc somewhere. And I just copy and paste this in and say what it is. Like this is my buyer's guide landing page so that you always have it um, going forward. But that would be um, that would be how you make the landing page. OK. Any other questions there before I go on to what to do with them and where to put them? Um, let's see. Okay, now what? So we made one. And so kind of, um, I just have a bookmark folder and save there, yeah. Or you could do that. That's another good way to go. Um, since you can register on a speech page, you need to have the speech page connected to a landing page. Why? You do not have to have a squeeze page. So this, particular one, we're not connecting a squeeze, we're connecting a, um, 
a downloadable link for the buyer's guide, you could say, here's all the new construction homes here, and then send them to a squeeze page of new construction homes. But in that case, I would, when you're making it, making the squeeze, do not make them sign up because they've already signed up with the landing page and then they're going to the squeeze page. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do that though, because I'd rather see a list of, see all the new construction houses and be like, Ooh, I want to click on that guy. Then, you know, just something like this where you can't really, unless you're putting a lot of information here that would make them really, really, really want to sign up for the new construction. Um, I would do that. Or, you know, if you had a, um, I've seen this before, and this is kind of one of the ideas for lead gen, but if you work with a builder that um, has some stuff and you made a, a special page on your website with some of the builder's information or some of the stuff that's not built yet, that's not on the MLS, let's say, um, there's no way to make a squeeze page for that. You could make the landing page for it and then land on that page on your website. Where was I here? So what are some ideas? So for the squeeze page, like I said, uh, it could be a single property or it could be a curated list. So like I was talking about before, you want to you know, think about what people want that's not easily searchable somewhere else or that's just you've already like you've done the search for them. So pools, new construction, um, foreclosures, reduced, you know, all those different things you can make with the with it and you can also think about um, doing um, things like areas and price ranges and um, sizes. So it might be like, hey, here's all of the four bedroom homes under X price in X school district for like families who want to get into the school district but they can't quite afford it. They're like right there, you know, like there's four homes that would, you know, match your criteria or whatever, that's a good hook. Um, for a curated list. Um, can you add a video to a squeeze page? Landing pages have that format, not as downloaded, but as an explainer to help the person to give their information. So not to a squeeze, because what a squeeze is, is just basically um, eh, a list of homes. So there's no way to like put, you know, right here, put a, a video there, no. Um, you could put the video on the landing page for sure. And then, you know, send them to the squeeze that's, that you're not making them sign up for on this level because they've already signed up on the landing page. But you cannot, no, you can't put a video here at all. Um, however, and I didn't actually put this on my, did I, but I didn't. No, I didn't put this on places to put it, but, um, well, social media, I guess. But YouTube, like if you have, a YouTube video that talks about things and you're like, hey, in my description, there's links to this list of homes or that list of homes. You could do that and put it, you know, underneath your YouTube links um, or whatnot. Okay, so uh, so that's for your squeeze pages for your landing. I'm like giving them something that I, that's not a list of properties basically. So, you know, buyer's guide, if you want something sent to them, um, you know, if it's, let's say I have a guy who does pre-construction condos and he has like floor plans and price lists, but he doesn't give them to everybody. You got to sign up first, sign up for it. Based on the hashtag, we've set up a um, email that's going to go back to them and uh, give them whatever it is that we promised in an email. Um, you can also get them to sign up for webinars and things like that for that kind of thing. If you're doing like a, a first time home buyers webinar or something and you want them to sign up for it, um, you know, the sign up could happen. And then when they get into KB Core, it could trigger a drip campaign that, you know, sends them the link to the webinar or the sign in instructions or something like that. So those are kind of things that you want to do for a landing page. Just if I, like I said, if, if it is a list of homes, I just think it converts better if you see the list of homes and you, you know, it makes them want to click on those homes. Unless the list of homes looks really crappy, in, in which case maybe you want to do a landing page first, but I find that that converts better. Um, and then where can I put them? So obviously you can put them on social media. You know, you can put it on your um, Facebook. You can put it in your link tree. You can put it, um, you know, on your YouTube channels, all those kinds of things. 
Um, you can put it in your website. So you can put it in your website navigation, actually. So let me see if I can find it here. No, I put it right here. So this is an example of that relocation guide. It could be right here in your navigation on your website. And if you um, click on it, I actually opened it up in, on my other screen, but you know, it's saying, okay, here's a relocation guide, um, sign up for it here. So you can be, you can put it right on your, I have way too many things open. I'm just gonna close them down. Um, you can put it right on your navigation. The other place you can put it is in your blog post. So if you are talking, you know, you have a blog post about new construction in the area, obviously you put a squeeze page for the new construction or you have a blog post about your webinar, whatever it is, you can have a squeeze or a landing page, you know, inside your blog. Um, you can also have it on um, custom pages. So like if you have a custom page on your website and you want to do, you hear register now for this, um, this is the pre-construction person I was talking about. Like if you click on that, it's gonna take you to the landing page of um, to sign up for the condo information. And I keep putting wrong one. Okay. So those are just some places that you can put them and you know, you, you know, put them all over um, on your website. And then in your you can put them in Google and Facebook ads. So I had a guy say to me, oh, my Google ads aren't converting. And I said, well, where are you landing them? And he was like, my website. <laughs> I said, well, just a front page website, you know, then they'd have to like make the search themselves. So whatever you're offering in your Google ad, obviously you want to have the squeeze page that forces the registration that is specific and already done for them. Um, <clears throat> Facebook ads, I you can put them there. I would I'd use a Facebook lead form before I use a... Um, a squeeze page, but if you don't know how to do a lead form and you just want to do a quick and dirty ad, you can definitely um, put them there. You can also put it in your email signature, you know, if it, your buyer's guide offer or your, you know, list of homes offer, it could be in your email signature. Um, you can put them in, you can set out mass text, mass emails, you know, um, to your database with those in there. And again, these, I wouldn't ask for sign up because um, they're already in your database, but I but I, it's a good way to kind of get them re-engaged in your website if they haven't been back to the website in a while. And the other place you can put them is your drip campaigns. So, you know, um, depending on kind of what drip campaigns you have set up, you can add them in as things they can click on when you're sending them emails and text messages, kind of like before. Um, I think that's it. Um, do you put a hashtag in your Facebook lead forms? If you're making a Facebook lead form, you do not put a hashtag in the form. What you would do is put it in your zap. When you're making a zap over, there's a spot in Zapier to add a hashtag there. And that's where you put your hashtag in, not in the actual. There's no way to put it, I don't believe, in the actual lead form but it will come over with a hashtag if you put that in your zap. Um, I think there was a question I said I was gonna answer later. I think it was about triggering. Um, oh yeah, Albany, okay, is it possible to make a short campaign that covers whatever the trigger was and then assign a second campaign that might be about Albany in general videos. Yeah, so whatever whatever um, hashtag they come in on, you can make any kind of campaign for. So let's say that um, you wanted to make a campaign. Well, it would be that whenever a new lead comes in uh, with, Hashtag is Los Angeles Pools, then this is the trigger to start the campaign. 
So the second campaign, the second campaign be assigned, you'd have to assign the second campaign either manually, or you could just set it up to run concurrently to be triggered by that hashtag, or you can set it up to start on day like 30 when the first one is over. Although I don't know why you wouldn't want to just put it all in one campaign to begin with. Um, and then, you know, you can always also pull that hashtag and send mass emails that way. So if it was about Albany, Oregon, Oregon and something was happening in Albany, Oregon, you could pull that hashtag and mass text or mass send everybody, hey, there's a big festival happening this weekend, you know, you should go or whatever you want to say about something that's happening in your community. Um, I hope that answered that question. Anybody else have any questions? about it. Okay. Well, if there's anything anybody saw that they want me to do or go over or make, I'll just put it in a free for all then. Um, if you have any questions about anything you want to learn about that's not related to this, I'm happy to use the rest of our time to do that too. I'm gonna play the Jeopardy music. Should I should put that up there somewhere? Nobody? Anything you want? Anything at all? I think please go through the dashboard. Okay, no problem. Yay. So a specific Facebook lead. Look at all these now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a specific Facebook lead forms have to have a specific zap. Yes. Um, okay, I'm going to go through the dashboard and then I will open Zapier and kind of show you that part. So on the dashboard, um, well, this is going to be a bad one probably because I don't have, let me actually go, this is kind of my demo account, so I don't have anything on it really. Um, let me find someone else's. We'll do Ryan's. <laughs> I'll use his. I just love me for that. Um, okay, so here's your dashboard. And if you go over your dashboard, basically the top level is just kind of the calls you have to make, which has, you know, what you have to do and um, your tasks, which again, tasks that you have to do, but nothing's due in this one, particularly today. Um, there's also training over here. So if you haven't done your quick start, if you haven't done haven't looked at the training calendar, I would always do that. Like there's all sorts of stuff in there to look at. Um, then here is your activity. So again, there's not a ton of stuff here, but you would see all the activity that's happening on your website, whether it be text messages, what people are looking at. Again, this probably isn't a good one to be in. And then you can drill down from here if you just wanna see what new leads are happening, what new texts, emails, that kind of stuff. Um, or you can do it here too. Property views, showing requests, all that stuff. I mean, all this stuff will be here, but if you want to just filter for only these things, you can do that. Um, so we've already gone through calls and tasks. Um, your calendar is not connected, <laughs> but you can connect your Google calendar to this and then you can see your calendar. And then if you go to my business, this is where um, you can kind of see what is happening um, with your, your business kind of at a top glance. But if you really want to know what's happening with your business, I highly recommend going into your business analytics and you can kind of see what's happening as far as, um, you know, your pipeline and you can go here and see, hey, how many of my leads, um, what, were my, what was my lead generation in the last 30 days? What am I getting? What pages are capturing the most people? 
um, you know, this is all kind of blanks, it's a dummy account, but um, the top properties that were looked at, you know, those kinds of things. And then you can look at your own performance and just kind of see what's happening. And also agent success, I really like too. Oh no, that's not it. Is it KV Core Activity? I think there it is. KV Core Activity is one that I really, you should check all the time. Um, how many leads don't have a search alert? How many leads don't have a market report? How many leads don't have an active campaign running? You'd be surprised how many of your leads don't have these. And if they don't have these, there's nothing driving them back to the website. There's nothing creating engagement. Okay. Where was I here? Let's, oh, is that Zapier? Let's go to Zapier. Uh, to specific Facebook lead forms have to have a specific zap. Yes. So when you're making um, a zap, so it's going to be your Facebook lead ads, new lead. Let's see if I can find myself in here. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all been too many times. And then I pick a page. Find one that I know has a, yeah. And then you pick your, so your form would be here. So you pick your form. I mean, you can do, I guess that's, I mean, you can do any form. I guess you, I mean, technically speaking, yes, you don't have to, you could be any form and the same zap. So every time anybody fills out any form, it would zap it in, but you don't want to do that because you want to know what your form was for, because then you can put a hashtag for that specific form. You can put, um, like I'll show you here. Oh, hang on, let me get my KV core. I, Xavier's, no, Xavier key. Do, do, do. And right here, like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna map all your fields, right? But no. then if you're down here where you can you could put a city, a price. If it's for a specific property, you could put the MLS number in. Um, and then it'll show that they looked at that particular property and it will set up their listing alerts based on that property. Or you can, again, right here, put your hashtag in so that if you have it, an alert, automatic alert set up for that hashtag, then it's automatically gonna get that alert. Otherwise, they're gonna be coming in and not getting alerts. So yes, I guess, technically speaking, you don't have to do a different one for every form, but you should, because then you can get specific with your hashtags, with your notes, you know, this lead came from this particular ad, um, the MLS number, if it's for a specific property or for, if it's an area you can put the city in, all that stuff will come over with that lead. I hope that answered that question. Okay. Um, what is Zapier used for? Uh, Zapier is an app that lets other apps talk to each other. 
So um, if you're doing Facebook lead form ads, it's an ad where Facebook collects the information from the lead for you when you run the ad, but then it just sits there in Facebook. And so this is the way you get it into Facebook or you get it into KV Core from Facebook is to set up a zap. It zaps it from one place to the other. Another, a lot of other good places to use this um, is if you've got, you know, um, you've got, let's say you want to keep a list of all your leads <laughs> outside of KV Core because your, bro your broker owns them or, or your, whatever. You, so you could have a zap that any new lead that hits KV Core automatically gets zapped into a Google Sheet. Or any new lead that hits KV Core gets automatically zapped into your Google Contacts. Or anytime you add a Google Contact, it gets zapped into KV Core. So like there's all sorts of ways you can use Zapier to kind of put people into all sorts of places when you want to. Or I've had people, um, you know, like they'll run a webinar and they'll do it on um, Eventbrite or something. And so they have anybody who signs up in Eventbrite zapped into KV Core or zapped somewhere else. So it's a great way to make things talk to each other. Okay, maybe a little off topic, but almost all my emails I send from the ambassador seem to end up in the promotions folder. Um, the promotions folder. Yeah, well, it's kind of a promotion that they see that. They, the advanced editor has a lot of HTML in it. And so it sees, Google's going to see that as a promotion as opposed to like if someone sends you an email because they know you and they're your friend, they're not going to send you a bunch of stuff like that. So it does that. Um, I don't know if it helps. I know if it's going into spam, there are ways to fix that. Um, I have to find the, there's an article on it, things you can do to verify your email address with Google so that things don't go to spam. I don't know if that would help with the promotions folder or not, but I definitely know um, that it does help with the spam stuff. And I'll try and find that and post it um, when we're done here. What does it mean when it says source tracked call? Okay, source tracked call. So source tracked call, la la. I shut down my KB core, oh, there it is. Um, it means that they called your smart number or they texted your smart number. And so if you go to lead engine call capture, this is your smart number. So if they called that number and talked to you or got your voicemail or anything like that, it's gonna track that call. So that's gonna, it's gonna take the caller ID from whoever called and give it to you. Or if you made a text code and they texted your code to that number, it's also going to um, show up as a tracked call. Is there a way how you can show how the mobile dialer works? Unfortunately, I can't because it would be mobile. Like I'd have to be like on my phone being like, this is how this works. And that's um, hard to do, but I actually, Tyler, I know there's a video about it and I can, um, I could probably put in here too. Okay. Is there a way to delete or get rid of all the past due on my KV core? Yes. But I don't think there are any pasts due on here, are there? Um, but do you see where, he, if it was on past due, if you had past due stuff here, but you don't, but it's the same thing, you can just click it down and hit mass delete, and it will take away all of the, the whole list of your past due stuff. Um, I signed up for Mastermind. How do I get to it? You're here. This is Mastermind. Um, you might think you mean for like signing into it. Um, I'm not exactly a hundred percent sure on that. And I can look into that and let you know. Mm, what is the previous where we did that? Zap from Facebook leads to sheets and constant contact for email campaigns and mass emails. Yes, you can do that. However, I don't know why you would use constant contact instead of your um, KV core mass emails, not that area, the right side, the upper right-hand side. Oh, poop. Not that area. The upper right side. Erica, I'm not sure what you meant by that because I wasn't watching it in real time. So maybe if you want to rewrite it and tell me again, <laughs> can we watch a recording of this? Oh, sorry for the past due. Not 
there, but the upper right hand side. Right hand side. Right hand side, upper corner. Not again, quite sure where you're saying. The past two I know is here. I don't know where is it upper, where, where it has the clock. Oh, here. Um, ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever opened that before. So I'm not um, I'm not 100% on how to do that. Task added. I mean, I would think that if you deleted it here, it would delete here. This is more like um, what the activities that have happened, not necessarily what is past due. Um, so this task was added. I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I can look into that, but I don't know because um, if you mean here, I think here, if you delete it, like I showed you, it should stop it here. But for here, I don't know the answer to that because I've never actually clicked on that. Um, oh, you meant the check mark. I think it should. I think that if you do the check mark, Whatever is here, if you delete it here, it should also do here. Does it not? It's hard for me to tell because I don't, um, there's no way for me to check it here. But I think if you, once you delete it here, it will delete up, up at the check mark. Um, okay. What's your recording? Yes. I think that's it. Okay. So I am going to, um, I'm going to put in a couple of links to some stuff. I just have to find them. <laughs> um, the mobile dialer was one. Here's one on the mobile dialer. If you go to our YouTube, you know that we've done um, search mobile dialer. If you go to the, the YouTube, also all of the videos are here too, if you wanna look at them, but um, here you go. So this is a video on, I'll put these in. Hmm. Oh, I just share them. Uh, that's on the mobile dialer. And this is also on the mobile dialer. Hi there. Yeah, so um, you watch these two videos for that. And the other thing I said, how do I get to the mastermind? I feel like, and I could be wrong, that I think it's in your, I don't think I have it because I'm not, this is just like a dummy thing, but I, I, I think it's right here. I think if you go to support and training, you tell me if you have it, if you've signed up for it, I think it, it's supposed to be here, um, the mastermind link under support and training. All right. All right. Well, we're coming up on an hour. If no one else has any questions, then um, what we do is we will, this video is being recorded and what we can do is we will put it in the mastermind group, um, goes to the cloud, they got to convert it and then we'll post it later, later today. 
where are the links? Oh, in the chat, I just put the links in the chat. So if you just scroll up in the chat, um, it is, yay, I was right, yay. Um, if you scroll up in the chat, there's the YouTube links um, about the mobile dialer. And um, I think that's it. Thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate seeing everybody. And um, we do this every um, week. You can't see it. The link. The link to what? To the mass, oh, to YouTube? Mm. Here, I'm just gonna put it in here one more time. Those are the two YouTube links right there in the chat. Links are not showing in the chat. Well, that's not cool. Um, that's weird, why? Okay, well, if you go, <laughs> I don't know why they're not showing in the chat, that's really weird. There's really no other way for me to do that. But if you go to youtube.com and you search up inside real estate, And right here, so it's also good to subscribe to it. You'll get stuff all the time. But you go here and if right here where it has a search uh, button and you just put um, mobile dialer, you can search for anything. I mean, there's so many things about all sorts of stuff, but um, that's where the two, um, two videos that I put on there was. Are you sending to everyone for just panelists? Oh God, you're so smart, Dennis. Thank you, dude. There you go, how about that? Everybody see that was <laughs> You're like, Heather is having technical difficulties today. Um, I also put the help article in here too. I usually have it set to everyone, so I just never ever switch it, so I don't. Um, I don't know why that was switched and so I didn't realize it. Okay, there we go. So that's the way you could do it, but I'm actually glad I got to tell you guys about the um, YouTube channel because it's got so, so much stuff on it. Um, if you ever have an issue or you wanna learn about something, I always say go here and type it in and you'll find what you're looking for usually. Okay, all right, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks everybody. And uh, we will see you Tuesday next week. Bye. Thank you.